Hey guys, it is Stephanie and it is Sunday again, so I'm excited to tell you guys about my awesome time at church today and also um, do our devotional um, and just share some good and bad things that went on earlier, but God is um, using them in me. So before I forget, I want to share the song that came on while I was getting ready uh, and it's I Am Not Alone, um, which is perfect. Um, um, for where I am. So, uh, first of all, um, yes, so during worship, um, and it was awesome getting to hug everybody at church again and knowing that I have two Sundays here um, instead of just one. So, just getting to soak up everybody and um, getting to worship in banners with Juniper. Um, so, it was um, between songs during worship, uh, Juniper kind of says, She's like, are, are you ill, mommy? She asked if I was ill. And it was like, I remember that that is the term that Josh and Zeris are using, you know, just as far as like not being able to drive because I'm ill and things like that. So, you know, I kind of knew that that had been, that term had been used. And so I was like, yes, that mama is, you know, but just like the Holy Spirit filled me up with truth to speak in that situation. And I really like, just told her that, um, you know, even though I'm, I'm ill, like God is wants to give us our, his strength and hope and joy in the midst of being sick and not feeling well and, you know, being ill. And so it was just precious. And then she's like, I still have, I'm a little sick because she has a cough because she had a cold earlier. So just really precious to be able to, you know, affirm to her um, that, you know, that, that the illness doesn't have to, you know, be something you're afraid of or whatever. So it, that part was just precious. Um, and, okay, yes. Oh, Oh, and also uh, one other awesome thing. Um, so uh, one thing I love to do, um, what our church here, usually like once every month or two months, um, people get together for a worship night. And there is one going on tonight at the old church I was at. So that also is awesome because I'll get a double dose of worship and getting to connect with the Monroe Park Vineyard people that I miss so much. All right, so... Um, Okay, and also um, another situation that was harder, um, but like I just like felt this joy this morning and like the sense of like God's presence, and so um, so later on in the day I had a hard the hard situation go on, and I'm not gonna share the details of it because it's sensitive, but um, just to say that like normally when these situations have come up before like it really takes me like just knocks me off my you know joy place um but it, i just have not felt that uh, that it had that effect and god just used it um for a place of truth be able to be spoken into that situation uh so it was just kind of miraculous that i'm like oh my gosh like i don't feel heavy and usually i would uh so thank you jesus and just the spirit of truth that just came over the conversations I had today. Um, yes, so that was awesome. Uh, let me just double check because I think it's time to do the devotional, uh, the one that was long, but now it's just enough time for me to read that. So let me just double check, double check. Oh, yes. Um, two more things also. It was cute. Uh, during the service, June was like, I'm going to run a marathon with you, Mama, because we talk about running a lot, too. So it was like, well, yes, probably spiritually, too. Um, you know, but just cute that that is something she's looking forward to doing. Uh, and I am, too, running with her a bit. But just the marathon, you know, probably one that she'll have to go when I'm not able to run but anyways it was just very sweet um oh and that was the other thing um so i was praying for juniper a couple weeks back and god just showed me like first of all this helmet she had on it was like the kind that you wear in the army like metal and green so it's camouflage and i saw her with that on and i'm like oh yeah she's got the armor of god and so i pray for her armor and it's just i also remember that picture when the stuff happened today that was like 
that reminder that she is protected. Um, so I even saw like the, the evil, not truth was trying to get into her head and her spirit, but it was knocking off the armor and wasn't able to penetrate. Um, so that was just really encouraging. Okay, I think I'm done with that. And time for our, I had the page set. Bear with me as I get there. Okay, yes. <clears throat> The title is Trivial Profanities, and it is the verse, um, verses, Jesus cried in a wild voice, If any man is thirsty, let him come to me and, and drink. He who believes in me, who cleaves to and trusts in and relies on me, as the scriptures have said, out from his innermost best springs of living water shall constantly flow. That's uh, John 7, 37 through 38. What does it mean to say God's true emissary is a Nazarite? A Nazarite was one who, I'm sorry guys, you probably hear the phone ringing in the background, but I'm not going to answer it because I'm focused here, but yes, sorry for the noise. Um, a Nazarite was one who made a special vow the vow of one who is willing to be separated from worldly pursuits and snares, to prepare himself totally so he may be put to service by the Lord. The special vow meant total abstinence even from certain things which were not wrong in themselves, and which to other people might actually be beneficial. As long as the Nazarite Oh, as long as he was a Nazarite, he must not eat anything that comes from the grapevine, not even the seeds or the skins. Now, not even the seeds or the skins? How often have we as Christians heard other Christians ask in reference to certain books or pursuits or recreations, what is the harm in it? And really the question is, what, what's the harm in it? even if it is unprofitable. Surely there is no harm in recreation. I have often heard this question asked in a tone of reproach or surprise or disgust, depending on the frame of mind of a questioner. To this I must answer, no, there is no harm in recreation. If by that you mean a pastime that will be, that will requip re-equip you for future work and will not cause a leakage of spiritual power. We must have a, flood, a fresh inflooding of life for soul and body too, or we will dry up and be like the deserts or desert. The real question, however, is this. What are we to find our fresh, where, where are we to find our fresh springs of life? Glorious things are said of you, O city of God. All my springs of joy are in you. Can you or I say the same thing truthfully? Or is it not a fact that quite without our realizing it, certain forms of recreation have taken hold of us and hinder rather than help? On this point, I must remember that I am not dealing with the question of what is wrong or right for another any other but whether as God's emissary I have something to learn from the special vow of separation taken by the Nazarites. The question of that vow, remember it is to abstain from things that in themselves were lawful and permissible but were not expedient. Even raisins were contraband. Surely there's no harm in raisins. Those of us who are God's emissaries, are to treat the world, not just its corruptions, but as legitimate joys and priv its privileges and blessings also. Is a thing to be touched at a distance? Why must, why, sorry, we must be aware at all times that if we are caught by its spirit or fed by its meat, we will lose our sensitivity to the very breath of the highest and will no longer receive the manna that falls from heaven to feed our souls. Is 
it is not that he forbids us this or that indulgences or comfort, not that he is stern calling us to a life of harsh, sorry, big word, sorry guys, uh, asceticism, as if that would make him more pleased with us. No, it is that we who love our Lord and whose affections are set on the things that are heaven for us today will voluntarily and gladly lay aside things that charm the world so that we may not be charmed and ravished. Oh, yes, so that we may be charmed and ravished with the things of heaven. Then our whole being may be poured forth in constant and unreserved devotion in a serving our in serving our Lord who died to save us. Therefore, we may bind ourselves to God with the vow that commits us to this, to look upon the world in all its delights and attractions suspecting the traps are set for us, reserving ourselves for a higher way. The world is not for us. We are called to live daily in the higher kingdom where we are touched and our souls drink from the Spirit of God. And finally, the prayer. My Father, so often we are restless, unsatisfied, wanting something more. We try to satisfy our inner thirst for life in ways we don't that don't satisfy, that only leave us thirstier still. Maybe underneath we don't really believe you are what you say you are. Life itself, pure flowing. Today, Father, help us cleave to you, to embrace you fully with trust, to see that things that draw us from the mirage, mirage they are, and to drink more deeply from your spring of living water. I know that was long, but there was a lot of really good stuff in there. And that is all I have. And I will probably do a video tomorrow or Tuesday to give me more of the Huntington's update of stuff. So have a blessed Sunday and I will talk when I have more to say.